<laughs> he is Charles Barkley on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. What's up, Charles? How are you? What damn eagle, brothers? How y'all doing? <laughs> doing great. Doing great. Do you fall with most Auburn fans that I talk to that are like, I re- it's hard to pick a, a team I want to cheer for in this game, but I'll take Alabama because Georgia's just that annoying? Well, I actually, they're the two best teams by far. I think you saw that during the semifinals. There was no way Cincinnati and Michigan had any chance whatsoever out there. You knew I, after watching those games, the first quarter, I'm like, these are two mismatches. Georgia and Alabama are the two best teams in the country. And I think we can say by far. So I'm looking forward to the game. Uh, you know how I feel about Coach Saban. Uh, I got a lot of love and admiration for him. He's the greatest college football coach ever. I've been blessed to be around him a few times. So I will i don't root against Coach Saban. But that being said, I think Georgia's going to win the game. Mm. Well, if they don't, uh, look, Kirby Smart is one of the best coaches in college football. I think everybody agrees with that, Chuck. He's an incredible recruiter. Yeah, but you still, Lance, Lance you can keep saying that, but at some point, you got to get over the hump. Yep. Well, well that's, like, what, that's like, what I was going to ask you, though, man. I mean, if he loses this game, you know, everybody talked about this was a generational defense, and if you lose to Alabama twice in one year, it's going to be a it's bad a, look. It's a, it's a really bad look. I wish that he would do something bold. To be honest with you, I wish he would come out and says, guarantee a win. I think when you're in this situation, you got to do something bold. Like, now you're going to get your ass handed to you if you lose. <laughs> like, I'll give you an example. When Coach Saban switched quarterbacks at halftime, that is what great coaches do. I think that's one of the most underrated things that Coach Saban has ever done. Because you guys know, y'all in the same business I'm in. If that doesn't work, he's going to get killed. <laughs> he, I mean, he's going to get killed. Uh, so I I would love to see Kirby come out and, and just say something bold and say, hey, you know what, guys? Coach Saban's the greatest coach ever, but this is our time, and we're going to win the game. I think that would galvanize his team. I, I think when you're an underdog, and listen, let's be honest, uh, I, I'm in Atlanta. I'm on my way to LA. I got to go shoot Capital One commercials the next four days. I've been in Atlanta all week. These people don't think they got any chance. I, it, it's crazy. I mean, I'm a, even uh, they're so terrified uh, of, of Nick Saban in Alabama. I think Coach... Uh, Smart, got to do something. And like I say, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It doesn't matter if it doesn't work. But I think somebody at Georgia got to do something bold to stoke the fires. That's just just my personal opinion. They don't think they can win. Charles, when we were over for the SEC championship game, they didn't think they could lose. I mean, we were walking into that stadium, and it was first off, it was two-thirds full of Georgia fans, not Alabama fans. And there yeah. wasn't a tailgate that didn't think they'd already won the championship and they were on the way to the national championship. So one loss has flipped them upside down that bad? I think the way they got beat flipped them. I, I wasn't surprised that Alabama won. I was su- surprised how easily they won. I think that's what shocked Georgia people. If it had been a field goal game or just a great four quarters, man – that was a beatdown. That was a 100% beatdown. But I got to say this. The reason I think George is going to win, you can tell yourself, we need to win, we need to win. But if you go back and look at that game, it was really a must win for Alabama. It wasn't a must win for Georgia. So I think from a psychological standpoint, you have to give Georgia the benefit of the doubt. I mean, if you you, because you have to say to yourself, go back and look at that game. If Alabama doesn't win, they don't make the playoffs. Georgia had a really a free game. So I'm I'm until Monday, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. That's that's just my personal opinion. The great Charles Barkley is with us on the Johnston RV Center.com hotline. Um, when you're playing 
you know, sports at this level, though, Charles, and you've done this, there, there's almost always a team, though, that's just got your number. Um, and it gets in your, it can get in your head a little bit. And I don't know if it's in Georgia's head yet, but Kirby does coach differently at times against Nick Saban in Alabama. Um, you, I just wonder. Yes, how, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how do you but deal that with go, that? Hey, but that goes back to what I was saying earlier. He does have a psychological advantage over Coach Smart. That's why I think he should do something different. It, like you got to take a chance. I mean, you do. You got to take a chance. Like, you can't just keep letting the guy punch you in your face, punch you in your face. That's why I said I would love to see Georgia coach come out and say, listen, guys, I like my team. I think we got the best team in the country, and we're going to win Monday night. What's he got to lose? But I think it would inspire his players. I think it would inspire the fan base because you got to try something different. You can't stick with the status quo. That's my personal opinion. I don't think he, uh, you know, one of the reasons I worry about Kirby is, and it's been big talk over here in Georgia for the last month. Like the reasons Saban is to go and Dabo is a terrific, terrific, great coach. They did two of the most great things in college football in the last 30 years that changed their, when he went to Tua, and when Dabo benched Kelly uh, Bryant, those two are the most courageous things in college football because and it worked out. Because like I said, you guys, we're in the business of killing people when it don't work out. If neither one of those work out, we're going to kill those guys. And not, and now not only are we going to kill those guys right after the game, we're going to bring it up for the next 20 years. <laughs> I mean, that's the way this thing works. But the one thing that shocked me about Kirby, I could not believe he didn't go to the backup quarterback in an SEC championship game. You that, And that goes back to what I'm talking about, doing something bold and courageous. You got to try something different. When you were watching that game, you're like, he's going to go to the backup quarterback, isn't he? And that's what separates Coach Saban and Dabo Sweeney. Yo, man, you can't just stick with the status quo. You got to try something different if it's not working. And I wonder, I really wonder if things are not going great for the Bennett kid Monday, is Kirby going to have blind loyalty until, instead of just taking a chance? You got nothing to lose. You know, early, you got on, nothing to lose. early on, Chuck, when Nick Saban was winning national championships, people were saying the only thing he doesn't have is an elite quarterback. I mean, A.J. McCarron was good, but he was winning national championships with guys like Jake Coker, uh, playing for national championships with guys like Blake Sims. Now he goes from Tua to Mac Jones to Bryce Young. I know it's only been one season, but do you think Bryce Young is the best quarterback Nick Saban has ever had? Well, I don't want to overreact after one year, but his uh, talking to my guys in the NFL – they, they really like him. And so I'm not going to overreact after one year, but he's probably going to be, first of all, they thought Alabama would be great next year. They thought this team was too young to be great this year. I mean, I'm talking about big time NFL coach. They're like, yo man, this dude's saving unbelievable. They thought Alabama was going to be great next year, not this year. They're like, they're too young. You got a young quarterback. We don't, that defense is not as great as it's been. They're going to be great next year, but not this year. So they've been admiring what Coach Saban has done. But Bryce is probably going to be the favorite for the Heismans next year. And they're going to have a better team next year than they have this year. So it's scary, but you know what? I'm happy with our coach, Harson. We had a great recruiting year. I'm really looking forward to us going forward down at Auburn. I mean, I think we shocked everybody. I I don't know a lot about the quarterback we just got from Texas A&M. Uh, but listen, I'm excited about our program down at Auburn. Because listen, this dude in, in Tuscaloosa, he ain't going nowhere. But hey, you want to beat the best. I You know, I want to beat the best. If you can beat Coach Saban, you can say we beat the greatest coach ever. That's what that's what I'm excited about down there with Coach Harson. Charles Barkley is with us on the next round, away from the national championship game. Dale Brown had his uh, had his name put on the court in Baton Rouge the other night. 
did um did did Dale recruit you back in the day? Was he was he on Charles Barkley or did he ignore Charles Barkley back in your Leeds days? <laughs> well, number one, I would I'm so glad you brought that up, Donna Way, because I would love to see Auburn put Sonny Smith's name on our court down at Auburn. I think it, it would be a, a, an unbelievable thing. When you think about Auburn, you think about two men, Pat Dye and Sonny Smith. And I would love to see the guys down at Auburn put Sonny's name on the court. I think it's well-deserved. I love Sonny like a father. It will be well-deserved. But, you know, for me, I, I, I because I kind of blossomed late against playing against Bible League, a, a gym. I hadn't even got any letter from a Division One school until we played Bible League Hurt in that minor tournament. <laughs> I had not. I mean, I mean, I had got junior colleges and small colleges, and I was looking at going to Gaston State to be honest with you, because they had a, a Coach Cook up there who I really liked. I can't remember. I, coach Cook was an amazing dude, but he was at Georgia State, no Gaston State, excuse me. And then after I played against Bobby Lee. Because Auburn actually, when Auburn came to recruit, they actually came to recruit another guy on my team. <laughs> uh, they did, uh, Auburn, and they, Auburn, Auburn didn't even know I was alive. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so it came down to Auburn, UAB, and Alabama. And Alabama couldn't get me under the salary cap. They were paying Bobby Lee and Ennis. <laughs> <laughs> and I think they probably were still playing Eddie Phillips at the time. <laughs> And, uh, and listen, UAB had a terrific team also. Coach Bartow, rest in peace, a great man. But once I went down to Auburn, man, I felt I just, like, I could not believe how awesome it was. And that's probably the best decision. That's probably the best decision I've ever made in my life going to Auburn. Well, now guys can legally get paid with name, image, and likeness. And, and you know, we saw what Cam Newton did for your university, winning a national championship. You've seen Caleb Williams the true freshman quarterback from Oklahoma who is now going to transfer, he's basically a free agent. If somebody came to you, Chuck, and you knew Caleb Williams could get Auburn over the top and win them a championship, what is it worth if somebody was like, hey, we need you to open up the wallet to get Caleb Williams here on a name, image, and likeness? Would you chip in? Yeah, I would chip in for sure. But see, this is my biggest concern with NIL. I think... You know, people talk about the haves and the have-nots. It's really going to be the haves and the have-nots going forward. I mean, I think I think we have opened up. We untook the toothpaste. Listen, I always I want to make this clear. I always want my players. I love our players to go out there and put their bodies on the line. I want all players to always be compensated. But number one, getting a free education, I think, is always a big deal. I don't want people telling young black kids getting a free education is nothing. That always drives me crazy when I hear that. Is the system fair and perfect? No, it's not. But when people tell young black kids getting a free education is nothing, it drives me crazy. And now I'm concerned about this NIL thing. Because like I say, Lance, I don't know. You talk about wild, wild west. We're in the wild, wild west right now. I don't know how it's going to end. I don't, like I say, I don't think we can put the toothpaste back in the tube. And I don't know where we're going to go from here. I, I really don't. Because the way things are going, we're going to have about 10 to 15 schools, maybe 20 at the most. And the rest of the schools are going to be irrelevant. They, uh, uh, they're going to be really irrelevant. because and, and, and what's going to happen, all the kids are going to start making business decisions. If you look at, uh, let's say, because you got two camps, you got basketball. If I'm a basketball player and I got to go to school for one year, I'm going to say to myself, where can I make the most money in one year? I like, and so they're going to go to big school. But in football, you say, well, wait a minute. I've got to stay for at least three years. How can I make the most money in three years? And so if you got a chance to go to Georgia or Georgia State, you're like, wait a minute, I can make a lot more money at Georgia State. Uh, uh, so and I, like, it's, Sanford and Birmingham is a great school. But if you're a kid and you say, well, wait a minute, I got to stay in school for three years. I got a chance to go to Auburn or Sanford. I'm going to Auburn. So even though Sanford is a great school and 
or Georgia State's a great school, these kids are gonna start making business decisions. So like I said, I'm really concerned about college sports going forward. Uh, and I think there's gonna be great animosity on these teams. That's what bothers me also, because yeah, the quarterback, they're gonna make a lot of money. The running back gonna make a lot of money, probably a wide receiver, but the big ugly offensive lineman, everybody talking about, well, some of these guys got, they get to go to Chili's or Applebee's. I'm like, that ain't no money. <laughs> that ain't no damn money giving guys, let guys, let guys eat at your restaurant one day a week. The, the quarterback gonna be driving around in a new car. <laughs> like, I, I, the big ugly offensive line be like, yo man, I get free food over here at Applebee's and Friday's. The quarterback got a nice new Mercedes <laughs> or a nice new truck. I want that. <laughs> so, that, so, so that concerns me going forward. I mean, like I say, uh, it's 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 interesting times we're in. Um, all right, enjoy LA. Is it you, Samuel, and Spike again? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, uh, I'm really excited. I, I got uh, four. Uh, I'm, I got a jet waiting. Uh, when you guys call me, I'm always going to do you guys shows. I got a lot of love and respect for you guys. So I got a jet waiting on me at the airport, and I'm flying to L.A., and I got four straight 12 hours days Ooh. with mm. Sam and Spike. Uh, we're going to do our normal stuff, the March Madness stuff. But I think I think this time Larry Bird's going to be in it again. Magic's going to be in it again. And this year, they're going to add Jennifer Gardner because she's a Capital One girl. Oh, so, oh, I, nice. I like her. Yeah, look so, out. Yeah, I, so I had a three-hour fitting Monday because I got like seven wardrobe changes, <laughs> and they were telling me about Bird and Magic and Jennifer. So I'm, I'm hoping – I'm going to yell at – see, I can't yell at Sam because Sam is amazing. But I'm going to yell at Spike. I said, yo, man – We've got to start early Monday because I need to be done by five o'clock Pacific Friday because uh, Monday because I'm watching the damn championship game no matter what. <laughs> but I can hey, 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 I can yell at Spike. Nobody yells at Sam Jackson because he's the goat. But you can yell at Spike. Uh, well, te text me a picture of wherever you're watching the game. I'd love to see your setup wherever y'all land to watch the game. I, I appreciate it, man. Hey, guys, y'all keep doing y'all thing. Thanks for having me on. Hey, war damn eagle. Hey, and listen, I'm not a hater. Good luck to the tide. Good luck to the dogs. I can't wait to watch the game, but war eagle is the most important thing. All right. Thank you, Charles. Safe travels, buddy. All right, guys. Happy New Year also. Yeah, you too, man. Thank you so much for the time. That is the great Charles Barkley, always with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. <laughs> 